I don't want a child. I've never wanted one. I, I had a plan, and this wasn't part of it. Relax. I promise this won't hurt a bit. How would he know? <laughs> Thanks. Just a few more items to check off, and we can start. Name and ID? Hadley, 14-0-31-21-09. And the procedure is being paid for by a third party? Yes. The- No explanation needed. No family listed? No family. It's just me. A special order here. Ah, that's for me. Right then. Let's begin. Nurse. Now, count back from ten. <sighs> ten. Nine. You'll be just fine, sweetie. Eight. Seven. Fetal extraction pre-check. Present. Fetal extraction cancelled. Jesus. Still pregnant. Fetal extraction? This is all because of the baby? Pregnant. I am pregnant. This isn't right. Okay. That is one heck of an intro. Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're going to start in on Kane by The Brotherhood. Now, if you guys watched my Stasis playthrough, uh, that was also by The Brotherhood, and Kane takes place in the same universe. If you guys have not seen Stasis or have not played it, play it. Highly recommended. Uh, if you guys liked Sanitarium, you know, the sort of point-and-click adventure game, but with a lot of, like, grotesquery and horror, these games are right up your alley. Uh, now... The one thing I had at the end of Stasis was I thought it could have been a little darker. It was dark, but could have been a little darker. 
And then the devs came into the comments and said, just wait until Stace, uh, until Kane comes around, you'll get your darkness. And this intro definitely gives me that. So, uh, I'm going to have a little, a little bit more to say at the end, including uh, a little bit about the Kickstarter on January 24th. That starts for the Brotherhood's next full-length release called Beautiful Desolation. I'm going to have a link for it. Uh, this, just FYI, I am playing a little bit before release. It's coming out on January 24th for free. I'm playing this a few days earlier because the devs were kind enough to give me a key. Uh, so if you guys see maybe a little glitch here and there, uh, just keep in mind this is pre-release. Uh, and they have been updating it pretty regularly. That said, I have not seen any problems in my testing of the game thus far. Okay, uh, that's it. Let's just get into it right now. Let's look around the room and we will go from there. Computer terminal. This unit is programmed to scan a host for a viable specimen. Holographic display. The display shows the current operational status of the fetal extraction system. Black metal struts. Sprinkler valves are installed around the metal support infrastructure, but the squalid state of the laboratory suggests they've not been used in a long time. Computer terminal. This unit controls the fetal extraction system's specimen retrieval functions. Lifeless hulk. Swollen, mottled tissue gapes wetly around the scalpel now stuck in his vertebra. A pungent green gas escapes from his severed breathing apparatus. Drainage pipe cover. The cover is all but welded to the floor with putrid surgical sludge. Surgical bed terminal. The blank screen is smudged with some sort of gelatinous residue that smells like ammonia. Stained bedding, dried blood and amniotic fluids stipple the plastic sheets like mold. Uh, floor, the clotted detritus of previous medical procedures doesn't inspire much confidence in the facility's patient survivability rates. Uh, okay, so we're going to check out the computers. The surv survivability rates, um, yeah, if you guys saw when the arm came down or whatever the heck that thing was, uh, if you hovered over it, the flavor text essentially said that it was for extraction of the fetus and that the host's survivability was irrelevant. <laughs> so that's the kind of world we're dealing in. Arm scanner control, valid gestate targets only. Oh, that's the thing that like when he was here, it would drop down this like green scanner on me. Yeah, this. Of course, I'm not there, so. Scan complete. Subject no longer present. Fetal extraction canceled. Okay. Uh, just real quick, what are we... Hadley. Okay, that's our name. Fine. What's this computer got for us? Arm. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, sure. Uh, software updated. 9901. Failure to extract uterus. Recalibration in progress. Successful removal of uterus without endometrium tearing. Successful removal of uterus without endometrium tearing. Okay, software updated. Failure to extract... This is crazy. This is batshit crazy. I am crazy. I don't think you're crazy, Hadley. I think this is crazy, but you are not. Failure to extract uterus. Failure to extract uterus. Extraction in progress. Okay, so that's us. Um, logs and notes. Log 998 of 998. Dr. Adams, calibration. Joseph Bueno, software update version. Denny Boland, power relay. Hank, service. Hank, extraction. Joseph Bueno, software update. Error, error. Hank, extraction. Hank, service. Dr. Adams, calibration. Hank, extraction. Okay, so I'm assuming that big thing was Hank. A, Get it? Yes. Program. Calibrate servos. Complete. Load protocols. Complete. Pre-scan target routed to scanner terminal. So the other one. And since it hasn't scanned us, I'm assuming this is going to fail. No valid target selected. Okay, fine. Let's go. I have an idea. Uh, it may work. It may not. Let's... Uh, hold on. Before we do that, though, what do we pick up? Man. Property of Kane Corporation? Jeez, guys. Okay, and this is... That's our data file. Okay, fine. Close. Let's go to the computer terminal. I got an idea. Uh, okay, let's press this. Because remember, when we press this, we have a little window of time. Maybe we can run in there and get scanned. Run, 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 run. It worked! Subject in place. Yes. Feet is ready for extraction. Okay, now let's go ahead and trigger the arm and see what happens. 
Maybe we can... I don't know, it had a lot of very sharp things. Maybe we can pry something off of it? Begin room extraction process. <sighs> breathe, Hadley. Breathe. Okay, not exactly what I expected to happen, but, uh, progress? Yeah? Okay, so, I think this means we could probably jump down there. The exclamation mark usually means, or at least in stasis, it meant fall. Uh, so empty void. Whatever's down there, it can't be much worse than up here. Now, let's look at this room before we go down there. Uh, what do we got? Fire. The flames of the fire consume the industrial plastic flooring with malice. Mangled floor tiles. The plastic membrane on the tiles has melted in the heat, molten craters blistering the surface. Empty void, whatever's that. Oh, and this is, uh, maybe we'll be able to jump down, and this is the, the sign for, like, exit. So maybe we'll be able to come up here when we go down. And whatever's down there is, remember there was, like, a drainage uh, cover when we were first looking around the room before we broke everything? Um, let's see what else we got. PDA, so that's a personal diary. We'll read that. Um, shafts of light. When light spills through the hazy murk from one of the upper levels. And the control terminal, the filthy, greasy terminal screen has somehow managed to avoid any significant damage in the blast. Okay, lucky. And we can use it, so good. And twisted wreckage. The stench of industrial lubricant and scorched meat is nauseating. Right, because it was a biomechanical arm when we first looked at it. Okay. Sorry, Hadley. <laughs> and to think a fall could have been a good thing for me a few months ago. Oh, uncalled for, Hadley. Funny, but uncalled for. I was gonna say, because she's like super pregnant, right? She's like eight to nine months pregnant now. Maybe it's the this harness that she's wearing that like keeps her from basically injuring uh, her baby. I don't know. All right, let's look around here and then we'll go up here first. Uh, assuming that this is another exit. And yeah, there it is. Uh, so, torn up floor panels. The biomechanical device's collapse has caused catastrophic structural damage. Glint. Light bounces off of the contorted metal item. Sharp bladed pincer, a surgical grade bifurcated blade is still attached to what's left of the horrific appendage. Okay. Smoldering remains, flames and smoke lick around the scalded mass of metal and flesh. The word mother is clearly scratched into an exposed aluminum surface. Okay. Overhang, a conveniently twisted steel girder protrudes from the level above. Okay, so that's where we can climb up. Uh, what else do we have? Exposed insulation, dripping condensation in this duct has rusted through the metal plating here, exposing some of the insulation. I'm assuming it's that red stuff. Um, is that it? Embers, unfettered flames spew stray embers into the darkness. And that's just an exit and it doesn't have any flavor text. Okay, let's look at this glint first. Mangled scalpel. Alright, let's look at that first and then we'll see if we can maybe pry that thing off. Mangled scalpel. This one is burnt, blunt, and mangled. Okay. 
Can you can you even reach it? Can't reach. All right. Well, that answers the question. Uh, but remember, the computer terminal up there is still in working order, and that's the thing that controlled the arm. So maybe if we go up there, we'll be able to turn it on and like position it somehow if it's not completely broken okay but before we do that let's actually read the PDA uh, because PDAs usually especially in uh, stasis oh it's Hank right uh, yeah I'm with you Hadley um, PDAs will usually have some sort of uh, story yes but also hints to what's going on usually Hank, March 23rd. Alice is sick. Clumps of her hair were falling out while I brushed it before her bedtime story last night, and this morning she was listless and pale and leaky. Mother says the food in the facility is bad, and just to be safe, I've started feeding her protein powder from my own stash, but I think it's something in her IV lines. We pump a lot of unregulated experimental chemicals through the hosts, and maybe their blood has become contaminated. I need to find a new source. Perhaps a sample from the brood. My sister's health trumps get, getting busted snooping around Kern's menagerie again. And I need to resupply my brood gas canisters anyway. Besides, it's an opportunity for scientific research. Like Dr. Adams would quip, you know what I'm saying? I don't get it, but I laugh anyway. Mother says I need to laugh at jokes or people will think I'm creepy. I've decided to make a list of behavioral prompts and appropriate responses because this social stuff can get complicated. Eh? A brood? Alright, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're gonna be introduced to the brood at some point. March 24th, behavioral prompts and appropriate responses. 1. Laugh if somebody makes a joke. 2. Blame Joseph if somebody else complains that body parts are going missing from the bio-waste disposal units, or blame one of the cane techs instead. Uh, and 3. Still unfinished. Okay. Uh, April 8th, Lucy is responding to the new treatment. Lucy is Alice. Well, was Alice. I think the name suits her better since she got her new face last week. She just looks more like a Lucy now. We had an intern once named Lucy. She had the same freckles on her nose. Uh, that was before, though. Uh, the other me, when I was much older. It's confusing. I've asked Dr. Adams about that, and he explained that because of the accident, my memories are not always reliable. So it's possible I dreamed up that part about her subsequent vivisection, but the screams and the tears and the way her organs gleamed in the surgical light seemed so real. Uh, and more than a bit erotic, I'll admit. One interesting, if somewhat unexpected, consequence of the new blood transfusion source is that Lucy now excretes a mucosal substance, not entirely dissimilar in effect to the brood gas. Oral ingestion certainly produces a comparable analgesic response. I've started scraping it off her skin and storing it in specimen jars because Mother says, licking my own sister is improper. 3. Don't lick your sister. Whatever. But now I can carry it around with me and use it when the pain becomes too much, so it's also more practical this way. Okay. May 31st. Work has been very busy. Two batches of hosts have had to be terminated ahead of schedule due to a series of malfunctions with Mother's product viability evaluation chip. There's been a lot of engineers and cleaners in and out of the lab, so I've moved Lucy from the storage closet in the atmospheric control room for now. My reputation around the facility is problematic enough already, and I don't need somebody finding her and making things even worse. Mother says they wouldn't understand. There's also much more space in the atmospheric control room, so as soon as I've resolved the issue with her left leg, I think I'll teach Lucy how to do the waltz. I've been reading about maggot therapy for treating necrosis, and a sample of Karen's larvae recently turned up in the lab. Time for some more scientific research. The arm chip failures have made Dr. Adams even more anxious than usual, and today I heard him asking Joseph about irregularities in the lab's security access log. I've seen Joseph lurking around in the lab with a woman late at night sometimes, but he told Dr. Adams he doesn't know anything about it. Dr. Adams believed him because he believes anything Joseph tells him. Or maybe Dr. Adams just doesn't want Joseph to get into trouble for some reason. The, the way he so obviously ignores Joseph's um, extracurricular activities with the hosts, for example. He's weirdly protective of the man. Wait a minute. I'm assuming we're a host, so... Ugh. Ugh, okay, fine. 
July 13th, I had to amputate Lucy's left leg last night. Although the maggot therapy showed some superficial improvement initially, the necrotic progression was apparently already too advanced and parts of the limb had started to liquefy. What a mess. We got a new batch of hosts fresh from Kane family planning to prep for second stage product incubation this week, so I should be able to find a suitable replacement donor. The problem with mother have persisted on and off, however, and she says the engineers want to wipe and reinstall her operating system. I can't allow this to happen. What if mother doesn't love me anymore? What if she forgets me? Mm-hmm. And mother, I'm assuming, is the biomechanical arm, so Hank is even crazier than you would expect. Hank, September 18th, Hadley is sick again. Oh, Hadley is Lucy? Well, it used to be Lucy. I've decided to call her Hadley now because I saw the name on a host's file, and I think it's really pretty. The host is really pretty too, so is her left leg. Anyway, I suspect that Hadley's new illness is related to the fungus that's contaminated the air vents all over the facility, which means a total lockdown at this level. Her mouth and nostrils are clogged with a slimy substance, and a lung biopsy revealed a startling, but impressive, range of mycotoxin of unknown taxonomy. Several of her teeth have fallen out, and her mucosal excretions smell like ammonia. Between this and the recent incidents with Mother, I've been thinking about an escape plan. Getting Hadley and Mother to the elevator will be difficult, though, and even if I could, my lack of a PDT won't allow escape. Okay. Well, that was more story than anything, but holy moly. Okay. Uh, control terminal. Let's see if we can move this arm. Uh, not so much. This terminal has been locked due to a security event. Um. Okay. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down, and we're gonna go check down the corridor. Maybe there's gonna be something else that tells us what the unlock code is, or... Helps us figure out what the unlock code is? I don't know. Um, <sighs> We're not going to be able to open that without something else. So, let's just go down here. It looks like a shrine. Maybe stabbing that oaf wasn't such a bad thing. Yeah, no, I was with you stabbing him way before this point, Hadley. Uh, okay, let's look around the room. Sealed circular airlock. It's locked. The door is inaccessible. The red spinning hologram indicates that this service door is locked. No entry permitted at this time. It won't open. Uh, no, we'll read that in a second. Eroded overhead conduits. Leaking moisture has increased the ambient humidity in here and the rancid pungence of that thing hanging in the middle of the room is almost tangible. Okay, exit. Omnitool Toolbox. It's an Omnitech Mark VI Omnitool, the one recalled for, quote, unanticipated occupational incidents. The box is locked. Alright. Conduits, conduits, fine. There's no, there's no avoiding it now. Hold on. Atmosphere Control Terminal. The machine looks almost out of place next to the gruesome medieval tableau. Right, because crucifix. The figure has been suspended delicately from the makeshift crucifix. Its paper-thin skin resembles a moldy peach. Suspended human remains, an obscene grotesquerie of amputated, mismatched body parts, crudely stitched together like some monstrous meat marionette. You know what I think this is? I think this is... Alice, Lucy, Hadley, whatever you want to call it. I think this is what Hank was writing about. Melted wax candles, shadows writhe in black phanta like black phantasms in the wavering light. Um, Fluid-stained altar, crusted blood and candle wax, and something that smells like ammonia? Yeah, that's the stuff that he would scrape off of her. And then, anything else? Sealed tin of protein powder. Still about half full, or half empty. It's definitely brown. Alright, let's pick it up. It's so dark. What? Hello? Who's there? It's dark in here. I can't see anything. I, I can't see you. 
Who are you? Why... Why can't I see? What's happened to my eyes? Where are... God. What is that feeling? My hands. My feet. My fucking skin. I found some spares. What? Nothing. Bad joke. Where am I? Okay, okay. Keep calm. I'm sorry. Was I in an accident? I don't know. I, th I think I can smell blood. Well, uh, I'm Hadley. I, I can't. Can't remember my name. Can't remember. It'll come back to you. I'm sure it'll come back to you. Hello? You there? Um. It's dark, but I can hear muffled noises. I can hear you can through my phone. Speak up, buddy! Alone again. Well, as alone as I can be with a kiddo inside me. Alright, so there is at least one other person. Maybe sort of in our situa in our in our own situation. Not that he's obviously going to be pregnant, but you know, being experimented on. Um, okay, close by too, because I'm assuming his voice carries through like these, yeah, the eroded overhead conduits, as we're not wearing like an earpiece or anything. Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna call it there <laughs> for now. Uh, I can't wait to continue this. I want to know what the protein powder is all about. Um. We will, we will come back next time and figure out how to, I'm assuming, move the arm or at least unlock the console because right now there's nowhere else to progress. I mean, we have to get the, uh, the arm moving. So, um, I'm very excited. Like I said, at the end, I wanted to talk about this. So, on January 24th, uh, the Brotherhood is launching the Kickstarter for their next game called Beautiful Desolation. It's not in the same universe as this, but it is the Brotherhood. It does promise to be another isometric point-and-click adventure game. I think it's post-apocalyptic Earth, and I'm going to link to it uh, probably in a card, and also I'm going to drop a link in the description in case you guys want to go take a look. I, ha I highly encourage you to go check it out at least, uh, because based off of Stasis, I'm a huge fan of what these guys are doing. Uh, that said, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have thoughts about the game, if you think I could be doing something differently, you think I overlooked something, if you just have anything else that you want to tell me, by all means, leave a comment. Everything's welcome, and in any case, I'll see you all next time.